Hi, I'm Sean Gannett, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about factoring by grouping. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. We're given this problem right here, 12a to the third power minus 9a squared plus 4a minus 3, and we need to factor this completely. Well, first thing we want to do here is find a group. So I'm going to group the first two terms and group the second two terms. So what do we see here? Well, in this first group here, I see I can pull out a 3a squared. So by pulling out a 3a squared here, I am left with a 4a minus 3. So that 3a squared comes out of the 12a uh, cubed. We're left with a 4a. And 3a squared out of 9a squared is just a 3. Plus, bring down the 4a minus 3 here. Now, what do we notice? Well, <clears throat> we see that we can pull out a 4a minus 3 from both parts. It's being multiplied, and then there's kind of like a 1 being multiplied right there. So if I pull out that 4a minus 3 here, well, what's left being multiplied? The 3a squared, and then that plus 1. So again, we're pulling out that 4a minus 3. goes right here. There's a plus 1. Right? The 1 that's right in front, multiplied by 1, and then 3a, well, if I can write it nicely, squared. And so our final answer here is 3a squared plus 1 times 4a minus 3. We're given this problem right here, 2p to the third power plus 5p squared plus 6p plus 15. And we need to factor this completely. Well, we want to put these in groups. So let's go group the first part, first two terms, and then second two terms. So now we're going to pull out a common factor from each one. I see in the first group a p squared is in both parts. So I pull out a p squared and what am I left with? I'm left with a 2p plus 5. The second part I'm going to do the same thing. A 3 goes into both parts here. Pull out that 3 and I'm left with a 2p plus 5. Well, what do we notice here? We see a 2p plus 5 and a 2p plus 5. Both are being multiplied by something in front of it. So we can pull a 2p plus 5 out of the whole expression. So I'm going to put that here, 2p plus 5. Pull that out, and then we're going to be multiplied by the leftover parts. p squared plus 3. And that's actually it. Our final answer here is p squared plus 3 times 2p plus 5. We're given this problem right here, 3n to the third power minus 4n squared plus 9n minus 12, and we need to factor this completely. I'm going to put this in groups, group my first two terms together, my second two terms. So now I'm going to see, well, what is a common factor that I can pull out in the first terms here? And I can pull out an n squared, it goes in both parts. So if I pull out an n squared from 3n to the third power, I'm left with 3n. Pull out a n squared from 4n squared, and I'm left with just a 4. All right, second group. A, what is it, 3? Three? 3 goes into both parts here. So pull out a 3, and I'm left with a 3n minus 4. What do we notice? 3n minus 4 is now in both parts right here, both sides, separated by addition. So I'm going to pull a 3n minus 4 out from both parts. And what I'm left with now by pulling that out is the n squared plus 3. And so now we have our final answer of n squared plus 3 times 3n minus 4. We're given this problem right here. 12n to the third power plus 4n squared plus 3n plus 1. And we need to factor this completely. Well, main thing here is I want to put these in groups. Okay, so I'm going to group the first two part together, the second two, part, uh, two parts together. Now let's go pull out a common factor of the first two parts here. I see a 4n squared is in both parts. If I pull out a 4n squared out of 12n to the third power, I'm left with 3n. If I do the same thing out of the second part, well, I'm left with just 1, right? They're the same thing. The second part, if it makes it easier to visualize, I'm going to pull out a 1 here. And I'm left with a 3n plus 1. 
Now notice, again, same thing. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. But now we see a 3n plus 1 and a 3n plus 1. So we're going to pull the 3n 3 plus 1 out, put it to this side. So we're pulling that out here, and then we're going to be multiplied by what's left over. 4n squared plus 1. And so our final answer here is 4n squared plus 1 times 3n plus 1. We're given this problem right here. m to the third power minus m squared plus 2m minus 2. And we need to factor this completely. Well, what I'm going to do is group the first two terms and the second two terms together. Put a little parentheses there. I'm going to find a common term in the first part, which is an m squared. m squared is in both parts, so if I pull that out, I'm left with an m minus 1 here. I'm going to do the same thing with the second part, but I'm going to pull out a 2. By pulling out a 2, we have an m minus 1 left there. Now what do you notice? We have an m minus 1 and an m minus 1. That's the goal. We have an m minus 1, m minus 1. If we pull that out, Pull out that m minus 1, we're left with what the other, the leading, I guess, coefficients there for each one, or what it's being multiplied. The m squared plus 2. Seeing how that's coming down here. And now we have our final answer m squared plus 2 times m minus 1. We're given this problem right here 5n to the third power minus 10n squared plus 3n minus 6, and we need to factor this completely. So what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to put some groups here, the first two terms and the second two terms. Let's go pull out a common factor of the first part. Well, 5n uh, squared, yeah, <laughs> goes into both parts. 5 comes out of 5 and 10, n squared can come out of n to the third and n squared. So if we pull out a 5n squared, what are we left with? We're left with a 1n here, and it's subtracted by just a 2. Same thing with the second two terms. Let's go pull out a common factor. A 3 is in both parts, and we're left with an n minus 2 as well. Now notice this, n minus 2, n minus 2. If we pull that out, it's the same term, essentially, n minus 2 here, we're multiplied by what's left over. The 5n squared plus a 3. And so my final answer here is 5n squared plus 3 times n minus 2. We're given this problem right here, 35xy minus 5x minus 56y plus 8, and we need to factor this completely. My first step usually is to well, group the first two terms and the second two terms, but this becomes tricky. I can't just toss a parenthesis here because there's that minus sign, and it would have to apply to both. So if I put a parenthesis here, like this, well the minus sign is supposed to be the 56y, but we're adding an 8. So I'm going to preemptively put that as a negative 8 now, and so when we distribute the minus sign to both parts there, and then we'll make that a positive 8. Okay, so be careful with that. So we have it like this. Now let's go pull out a common term from both parts. A 5x is in both parts here. I have a 5x, and so I'm left with, if I pull in a 5x, 5 divided by 35 is 7, and we have 7y here minus just 1. Subtraction going on, and if I pull out, well, I can see there's an 8 in both parts. So if I pull out an 8, I'm left with a 7y here minus 1. Well, what do you notice now? 7y minus 1 and a 7y minus 1 right there. So I can pull a 7y minus 1 out of both parts. And what am I left with? Well, we need to multiply the first two parts here, so 5x minus 8, and there we have our final answer. 5x minus 8 times 7y minus 1. We're given this problem right here, 224az plus 56ac minus 84yz minus 21yc, and we need to factor this completely. Well, one thing, I know you probably don't know off the top of your head, I didn't until I investigated a 7 goes into all parts here. So let's go make this a little simpler and pull out a 7. By pulling out a 7, I'm left with a 32AZ plus an 8AC minus a 12YZ. 
and minus a 3yc. But now we can, by pulling out 7, smaller numbers are a little easier to see and deal with. So let's go group the first two terms here and the second two terms. Now the second two terms is going to be tricky. That minus sign is only to the 12yz. By putting a second round of parentheses here, I'm now saying that minus sign has to apply to both parts. So to counteract, to make sure when it is applied that this is a minus 3yc, make that a plus sign now. Okay? All right. So now we have it set up like this. We want to pull out a common factor here. So 7 comes down, and what do we have? Well, an 8a is in both parts here. So if I pull out an 8a, what am I left with? If I pull out an aa from 32az, I'm left with a 4z. 8a out of 8ac is just a c. Minus now, do the same thing with the second parenthesis here. A 3y goes in both parts. So if I pull out a 3y, I'm left with here a 4z plus a c. So hopefully we can see some repetition here. 4z plus c and 4z plus c. So again, we're kind of going to break this down here. I'm going to pull out a 4z plus c from both parts of the inner parenthesis right here. By pulling that out, we're left with it being multiplying the leftovers here. 8a minus 3y. And so my final answer now is 7 times, oh, we have to put another parenthesis here. Oh, did I forget that? I did. Right here. All right. Here we go. Keeping it all nice and neat. Don't forget it. 7 times in big parentheses, another parentheses, 8a minus 3y times 4z plus c, and that is our final answer. We're given this problem right here, mz minus 5mh squared minus 5nz plus 25nh squared, and we need to factor this completely. Well, first thing I like to do is group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. The second two terms becomes tricky. That minus sign here goes to the 5nz, but not the 25nh squared. By putting a parenthesis here, that would make this minus sign distribute to both parts. That's an issue. But if I make this a negative right here, 25nh squared, when the minus sign gets distributed, it keeps it positive. So we're, we have to make sure we do that step. Now let's go find a common term in the first parentheses. An m is in both parts. So we pull out an m, and I'm left with a z minus 5h squared. The second part here, what do we see that we can pull out? Well, 5n goes into both parts. So I pull out a 5n, what am I left with? Well, just a z here, minus, well, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and we pull out the n, so we're left with just the h squared. That looks familiar. z minus 5h squared is in both parts now. So I'm going to pull that out, z minus 5h squared here, by pulling that out, I'm left with, well, what's in front of each one, an m minus 5n. And so our final answer here is m minus 5n times z minus 5h squared. Uh, We're given this problem right here, 12xy minus 28x minus 15y plus 35, and we need to factor this completely. Well, what I first like to do is put some groups here. The first two terms in a group and, well, the second two terms in a group. But this is tricky. That minus sign was just to the 15y. By putting parentheses here, the minus sign has to distribute to the 35, but we want that to stay positive. So we have to counteract that negative that's going to be distributed and put a minus sign over the 35. Now we're good. So let's go see, well, the first two terms. A x is in both of them, and 4 can come out of both of them as well. So if I pull out a 4x, what am I left with? Well, 4x out of 12xy is 3y. 4x out of 28x is just a 7. So now we do the same thing with the second two terms, or second set of two terms. A 5 goes into both parts here. So by pulling out a 5, I'm left with a 3y minus 7. The 3y minus 7 is familiar. We've seen that in both parts right here. So I can pull out a 3y minus 7 here from both parts, 
And what we're left with is multiplied by the numbers in front of each one, 4x minus 5. And so my final answer here is 4x minus 5 times 3y minus 7. We're given this problem right here, 40xy plus 30x minus 100y minus 75, and we need to factor this completely. First thing I'd like to look for is, well, is there something I can pull out of each part here? And 5 goes into all the numbers. So if I pull out a 5, I'm left with an 8xy here plus 6x minus a 20y minus 15. All right. Now we're going to deal with just the inside and the 5 kind of stays on the outside. I'm going to put some parentheses actually around the first two terms and, well, the second two terms. But notice that minus sign was just to the 20y. We want a negative 15. So if I put a positive 15, when that minus sign gets distributed to both parts, it'll still become a negative 15. Be careful with that. So now, what goes into the first two parts here? Well, a 2x can be pulled out of an 8xy and a 6x, leaving us with a 4y plus 3. Same thing with the second two parts here. 20y and 15 both have a 5 that can be pulled out. We're left now with a 4y plus 3. Well, that should look familiar. 4y plus 3 is written twice. So the 5 still comes down, okay? And we're going to pull out a 4y plus 3 from both parts here. 4y plus 3. So I'm pulling that out here. And what we're left with, well, <laughs> gave myself a lot of breathing room here, is the 2x minus 5. And so our final answer here is 5 times, in parentheses, big one, and then little one, 2x minus 5 times 4y plus 3. We're given this problem right here, 75a squared c minus 45a squared d minus 30bc plus 18bd, <laughs> and we need to factor this completely. Well, I'm going to see if I can break this down a little bit. I know a 3 goes into all parts here. So by pulling out a 3, I'm left with a 25a squared c minus a 15a squared d minus a 10bc plus a 6bd. Now I'm going to group the first two parts and the second two parts. So I put a parenthesis here. And when I put a parenthesis on the second two parts, that minus sign I know will have to be now be distributed to both parts, but I want to make sure that there's a positive 6bd after that. So by putting this a negative 6bd, when I distribute the minus sign to this part, it will then be a positive. So don't forget that. Now from here, let's go pull out what's a common term in 25a squared c minus and then 15a squared d. And that's a 5a squared is in both parts. By pulling that out, I'm left with a 5c here minus a 3d. Do the same thing with the second two parts here. A 2b goes into both parts. So if I pull out a 2b, I'm left with a 5c minus just, well, a uh, 3d. Right there. Now 5c minus 3d is repeated. We can see that. Don't forget the other big parenthesis. So, we have 3 minus. I'm going to pull out the 5c minus 3d here. Pull out a 5c minus 3d. And what I'm left with is the 5a square minus 2b. I gave myself a lot of room, but it's all right. And so our final answer here is 3 times in big parentheses 5a squared minus 2b times 5c minus 3d. We're given this problem right here, 192x squared y plus 72x to the third power minus 24rxy minus 9rx squared. And we need to factor this completely. I notice an x is in each part here, as well as 3 goes into each number. So I'm going to pull out a 3x here, and what am I left with is a 64xy plus a 24x squared minus an 8ry minus a 3rx. Okay. 
And so we pulled out the three X there from every single part. Now we're going to group the first two terms inside the parentheses and the second two terms. Now this is going to be tricky. By doing that, this minus sign has to distribute to both parts. So to counteract, to keep this minus 3RX still there, I'll make that a positive. Okay? All right. So now the 3X just comes down. And what's a common term in 64XY and 24X squared? That's going to be an 8X. So I'm going to pull that out, and I'm left with an 8Y here plus a 3X. I'm going to do the same thing here. A common term in 8RY and 3RX is just the R. So I pull out an R, I'm left with an 8Y plus a 3X. Now that should look familiar because it's written twice right here. So an 8Y plus 3X is in both parts, so we're going to pull that out. Pulling that out, we have an 8Y plus 3X from both parts, and we're left with that, well, multiply it right here, the r, or the 8x minus r, okay, 8x minus r. Now don't forget that 3x still needs to come down. And so our final answer here is just 3x times 8x minus r times 8y plus 3x. We're given this problem right here, 90au minus 36av minus 150yu plus 60yv, and we need to factor this completely. Well, the first thing here is I see a 6 goes into each number. So I'm going to pull it out. By pulling out a 6, I'm left with a 15 AU, I can write it, minus a 6 AV, minus a 25 YU, plus a 10 YV. All right. So the 6 is going to stay at the outside for a while here. Let's work on the inside. I'm going to group these first two terms in here and the second two terms. Now be careful, that minus sign was going to only go to 25yu, but now that I put parentheses in there, the minus sign will go to both parts, so I have to counteract that by making that a negative 10yv. So now from here, simplifying or pulling something else out. 6 comes down here, but a common term, what's in 15AU and 6AV? And that's going to be a 3A goes into both parts. So I pull out a 3A, I'm left with a 5U minus a 2V. Same thing here, a 5Y goes into both parts. Pulling out a 5Y, I'm left with a 5U minus a 2V. Don't forget the big parenthesis. Now 5u minus 2v is now in both parts here. So if I pull that out, I have a 5u minus 2v here. Pulling that out, I'm left with, well, the 3a minus 5y here. Don't forget to bring the 6 down. And now we have it factored. Our final answer is 3 times, or sorry, 6 times 3a minus 5y times 5u minus 2v. We're given this problem right here, 140AB minus 60A squared plus 168B minus 72A, and we need to factor this completely. Well, 4 goes into all parts here, so if I pull out a 4, I'm left with a 35AB minus a 15A squared, and remember, we're pulling the 4 out of each part, plus a 42 B minus an 18A. Now here I like to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. So in doing that, uh, 4 comes down. What's a common term that's in 35AB and 15A squared? And that's going to be a 5A. So I pull out a 5A and I'm left with a 7B minus 3A. Plus, here, 42b minus 18a, I can pull out a 6. 6 is in both parts here. Pull out a 6, and I'm left with a 7b minus 3a. Well, that should be familiar. 7b minus 3a is written twice. So if I pull that out, 7b minus 3a from both parts, 
I'm left with that being multiplied by the 6 and the 5a comes down. Don't forget this 4 here. And so now our final answer is 4 times 5a plus 6 times 7b minus 3a. We're given this problem right here, 105ab minus 90a minus 21b plus 18, and we need to factor this completely. Well, a 3 is in all parts right here, okay? So I can pull out a 3, and I'm left with, from all parts, 35ab minus 30a minus a 7b plus a 6. So now I'm pulling that out, and so now I'm going to group the first two terms and the second two terms together. First two terms like this. The second two terms is a little tricky though. The minus sign only went to the 7b, not the 6. So to counteract that, put a minus on the 6 now. So when the minus sign gets distributed, it's a positive 6 still. So now, going down, what is in 35ab as well as a 30a? And that's going to be a 5a. So we pull out a 5a from there, and we're left with a 7b minus 6. What's in a 7b minus 6 like term? Nothing really, but to show a place value, I'm going to pull out a 1. And I have a 7b minus 6 here. Well, 7b minus 6 is now written twice. Not bad. So by doing that, I can pull out a 7b minus 6 from both parts here. And I'm left with, well, the 5a minus 1. Don't forget to bring down the 3. And our final answer here is 3 times 5a minus 1 times 7b minus 6. Yeah. We're given this problem right here. 16x squared c plus 8xyd minus 16x squared d minus 8xyc. And we need to factor this completely. Well, one thing I notice is that 8x is in all parts here. So I'm going to pull that out. Pulling out an 8x here, I'm left with a 2xc plus just a yd minus a 2xd and then minus the yc. Okay. Well, now I'm going to rearrange inside the parentheses to put my similar terms together. So 8x still comes down, and I have a 2xc here first, but I'm going to put the 2x, uh, the minus 2xd next. They both have a 2x, I notice. Then we have the yd right here, and then the minus yc here. Okay? Not too bad. Now I can show my groupings. I'm going to group the first two here and the second two. 8x comes down, and the first two, I notice that 2x comes out of both. So I take a 2x out, and I'm left with a c minus a d. Be careful with the parentheses and the c's. They look alike. The second part, both of them have a y in it. So if I pull out a y, okay, so pulling out a y, I have a d minus a c here. Hmm. c minus d is very close to d minus c. And I know by grouping, I need to pull that out. So if I change this around, if I pull out a negative here, right? So if I pull out a negative number from both of them, this becomes negative, that becomes positive, and this becomes negative. So let's rewrite that, 8x times 2x times a c minus d minus y times, rearrange, c minus the d here. Now it's a little easier. A c minus d I can pull out from both parts, left with a 2x minus y here, and the 8x comes down. And so my final answer is 8x times 2x minus y times c minus d. We're given this problem right here, 150m squared nz plus 20mn squared c minus 120m squared nc minus 25mn squared z, and we need to factor this completely. Notice that there's an m in each part here, and there's an n in each part, as well as a 5. So let's go pull that out. We pull out a 5mn from every single part, and we're left with a 30mz plus a 4nc minus a 24mc minus a 5nz. 
So I pull that out from each part here. Now let's go rearrange some like terms or similar terms. My 30 MZ I still have first, but there's an MC, the 24 here. So I'm going to put that over here, minus 24 MC. Then I'm going to bring down my 4 NC and then bring down my minus 5 NZ. Just doing a slight rearrange here. Again, 5 MN comes down and actually before I do that, we're grouping these like this. So let's go pull out here now. What's a common term in 30 MZ and 24 MC? And that's a 6M. Pull out a 6M, we have 5Z here minus a 4C. Same thing, an N is a common term in both of these. So I pull out an N and I'm left with a 5, uh, what is it? Uh, pull out an N, I'm left with a 4N. And then a, I almost lost my place there, <laughs> 4n and a minus uh, 5z, right? Yeah, up uh, 4c. Oof, that sometimes you lose your place, you mess up a little bit. So I have a 4c here when I pull that out, and I have a 5z. Now that's pretty close. 5z minus 4c, and 4c minus 5z. If I pull out a negative 1, I have a negative n out here, a negative, and this becomes a positive, and now it's very similar. So let's rewrite that so we can see it. 5mn times 6m times 5z minus 4c. That's c. Man, when you get lower, I always write my c's like a 6s. Bear with me. c. Minus n times here 5z minus 4c. Oof. Z's and c's. So now we can see the 5z minus 4c is in both parts. Pull that out, 5z minus 4c here. And then we bring down the 6m minus the n, that also gets multiplied. And then bring down the 5mn. And so our final answer here is 5mn times 6m minus n times 5z minus 4c. We're given this problem right here. 105 XUV plus 60 XV minus 70 XU minus 90 XV squared. And we need to factor this completely. Well, I want to pull out a something that's common here. I see an X in each term as well as 5. So I pull out a 5X and I'm left with a 21 UV uh, plus a 12V minus uh, a 14u minus an 18v squared. Now from here though, I want to put some common terms next to each other. Let's rearrange this. 5x comes down, 21uv here, and I'm actually going to put the 14u here, minus 14u, then plus the 12v minus the 18v squared. Okay. So I'm going to group the first two terms together and the second two terms. So what does that leave us? Well, 5x comes down, and what's a common term in 21uv and a minus 14u? Well, I pull out there as a 7u. 7u is in both of them. And I'm left with a 3v minus 2 here. The second part, I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm kind of want to see if I can get a 3v minus 2. I notice a 6v is in both parts, but if I pull out a minus a 6v here, what happens? Well, negative 6v out of a 12v is just a negative 2, so I'm going to put that right here. That is going here. Negative 6v out of a negative 18v squared is a positive 3v. And the more you do this, you get better at kind of seeing that. So now I have a 3v minus 2 in both parts. Pull that out, I have a 3v minus 2 here. And what am I left over with? Well, the 7u minus the 6v, and the 5x comes down. And so our final answer here is 5x times 7u minus 6v times 3v minus 2. We're given this problem right here, 112xy minus 16x plus 128x squared minus 14y 
and we need to factor this completely. Well, first thing I notice, a 2 goes into each part here. So let's pull that out. 2 comes out, and we're left with a 56xy minus an 8x plus a 64x squared minus a 7y. Now from here, I'm actually going to rearrange and put some of my similar terms next to each other. 2 comes down, 56xy stays here, but let's put the other y next to it, minus a 7y. Then I'm going to put the positive 64x squared here, and then the minus 8x. I now can group the first two terms together in the second two parts. 2 comes down, and what is, goes into 56xy? and a 7y, and that's just going to be a 7y. So if I pull out a 7y, I'm left with an 8x minus 1. Same thing in the second part, what's in 64x squared and an 8x, that's an 8x. Pull out an 8x here, and I have an 8x minus 1. Well that's nice, 8x minus 1 is in both parts. So I pull out an 8x minus 1 here, from both parts, and what I'm left with is a 7y plus 8x from here and here, and the 2 comes down. And so our final answer here is 2 times 7y plus 8x times 8x minus 1. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if it was, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math.